This is example 3.11 on page 110 of our textbooks. Here we're going to put all of the knowledge that we've learned about naming um, and utilize this flowchart that we've um, been given to help us name a mixture of compounds. So um, part A, B, and C here, those are all different types of compounds and on a quiz or exam or even on your homework you're going to be able to you're going to need to be able to recognize each of these and figure out how to name them given a mixture of different types of compounds so let's start with a first thing we need to do is determine what type of compound it is so so2 sulfur is a nonmetal oxygen is also a nonmetal so therefore, we're going to be naming it as a molecular compound. So A is a molecular compound. So remember that if we have one of our first element, we don't have to put mono in front of it. It's just understood. So the first name in this is literally going to be sulfur and then we have two oxygens so the prefix for two is di so um, it's going to be di and remember we replaced that ending with ide so it's going to be sulfur di oxide we only use the base um, and replace the ending with IDE. So our base in this case is OX, IDE is what we replace. So it becomes sulfur dioxide. All right, example B is, notice it's starting with an H and it's got a little aqueous next to it. So we should be able to recognize that as an acid and not just any acid it's not binary it's an oxy acid so if you don't know what polyatomic ion this is ClO4 is the perchlorate ion since it ends in ATE we're going to replace that ATE ending with ic acid so this becomes perchloric acid. Remember, if it's an oxy acid, we don't have that hydro in front. It's only when there's two elements present. And then last but not least, we have COF2. So hopefully you recognize that cobalt is a metal. It's a transition metal and fluorine is a nonmetal. So therefore, we're going to name this as an ionic compound. And not just any ionic compound, cobalt, if you look at your periodic tables, is a transition metal. So that means it can form more than one type of ion. So we're going to have to include a Roman numeral in our name. So in order to figure out what charge cobalt is, we need to remember that as an ion, fluorine forms minus one ions. Since I have two of them, they have a total two minus charge that they contribute to our compound. Since our compound has to be neutral, the only thing that's going to be able to um, cancel that out is if cobalt is 2 plus. It's going to exist as in the 2 plus form. So that means we're going to write Roman numeral 2 after our cobalt. So to name this, it's going to be cobalt parentheses ii, Roman numeral for 2, and then fluorine, since it exists as an ion, becomes fluor so we follow the 
chart for this, recognize what type of compound each is, and name it accordingly.